Hello and welcome to the second episode of season three of Conservation Conversations with BirdLife South Africa. I'm your host, Melissa Whitecross, and it is fantastic to be back with all of you on our regular Tuesday slot. I'm coming to you live from Johannesburg, South Africa, after some epic expeditions into the Southern Ocean and the high altitudes of the Maluti Mountains. As Christina said last week, we have some very exciting shows lined up for you this year, and we are thrilled to keep on learning and sharing our passion for birds, birding, and conservation with all of you through these free weekly webinars. If it is your first time with us tonight, welcome. Please tell your friends about the show and get them to join in the weekly fun. Now, tonight's show is pre-recorded as Lance Robinson has had to dash off to the Eastern Cape. However, I will be on hand to answer any questions if there are any at the end of the show. Please also note that we have some fun interactive questions for all of you to give a try at identifying the birds on screen using Lance's tips and tricks. But before we get into that, please remember that you can communicate with me using the Zoom chat room and questions can be posted into the Q&A box throughout the webinar. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can use the comment feed for your comments and questions. Now we love hearing from you, so please use the hashtag conservation conversations on all major social media channels to let us know what you think of the show and catch up on all of our previous episodes via BirdLife South Africa's YouTube channel. Please note that tonight's show will not be hosted on YouTube in its entirety, just to protect some of Lance's intellectual property, but be sure to, to stay tuned to this live feed and you will catch up on everything there is to know about this evening's main course. Now this month, Toyota South African Motors have generously sponsored Conservation Conversations. BirdLife South Africa and Toyota have a proud partnership together that focuses on protecting our wetlands and the threatened birds who live in them, such as the critically endangered white wing flufftail. Now through a collaboration with Rand Waters Waterwise, Joburg City Parks and Zoo, and the Pick and Pay School Club, Toyota was able to assist us in producing this year's Flufftail Festival Wetland Warrior Activity Book. This great resource is available for download on BirdLife South Africa's website and is a great way to teach primary school children about water, wetlands and water bird conservation. A big thank you to Toyota South African Motors for their support. Now, so many of you have generously contributed to keep these webinars free for all to learn and enjoy. Every little bit helps and we really do appreciate your support. Visit the Quicket page or EFT BirdLife South Africa directly and use the reference webinars and your name if you would like to continue supporting the production of this show. The South African Listers Club is a proudly South African listing club. Those of you who may have recently twitched the laughing girl seen in Muscle Bay over the weekend will be able to add this exciting bird to your, Southern African, your South African lists. Sadly, this rarity seems to have flown off. So those of you who did not manage to twitch it are going to have to wait for the next giga alert from Trevor Hardiker and the Rarities Committee. But you can join BirdLife South Africa in celebrating birds and birding by joining the Listers Club through our website and collecting your special milestone pin badges as you go. Reaching a milestone in your birding journey is an achievement worth celebrating and each badge is on sale for just 75 Rand. And all of that goes into helping our community guides and AV tourism project. So it is a worthwhile club to join. You can purchase these online at shop.birdlife.org.za. Now tonight, Lance Robinson has put together a taster of his fantastic Birding Basics course for all of you. Unfortunately, Lance is currently working in the Eastern Cape where there is little to no signal. So tonight's show is a recording. However, I have put together a little interactive ID challenge for all of you at the end. So stay tuned and enjoy the fun. I'll also be on hand to answer any questions if there are any. Now Lance Robinson has spent the better part of the past 25 years birding. He's the incumbent honorary president, a former chairman of the Vitz Bird Club, and a past XCOM member of BirdLife South Africa. Lance holds a BSc Honours in Natural Sciences and is Fagasa qualified. Lance has an abiding passion for sharing his birding preoccupation with others in the field, and as BirdLife South Africa's recommended course provider, often presents bird courses and birding-related presentations to the public. Lance also happens to be married to our head of conservation, but don't let that fool you. He's father to one of my absolute favorite future lady birders to watch out for, Claire. 
We hope that you'll enjoy the show tonight, and I will see you afterwards to see if you can put what you have learned to good use. So I hope everyone will enjoy what Lance has to offer, and here we go. If there are any issues with the sound, just pop me a message in the chat room and we will take care of it. Enjoy, everybody. Welcome, everyone. We sure live in an amazing region. Southern Africa has over 900 species of birds for you to enjoy. But that's not all. There are various plumage differences between the sexes and even different age groups to consider. You could, therefore, end up have, having multiples of 900 to identify in the field. So yes, it can be quite bewildering. The best way to tackle this is to build on a systematic way of approaching bird ID, and this is what this module, part of a beginner's course, is all about. I would like to introduce you to a seven-step system which will enable you to accumulate enough information to identify your bird before you turn to your field guide. The best way to identify birds is to pay attention to as much detail as possible and to use all the clues you can. It really helps to try several of the key steps discussed for every bird, but you need not apply each of these steps each and every single time. Well, folks, that really brings me to the end of the presentation, and I'd like to make specific note of thanks to the photographers who made their images available, and then a special word of thanks to Philip Tarberton, who put the slide deck together. Please feel welcome to contact me if you'd like to know more about the Full Birding Basics course and other courses that we offer. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you out in birding one day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lance, for that absolutely fantastic presentation. I hope everybody has left with some really exciting knowledge on our birds and how to identify them. Now, as I promised, we've got something a little bit different for all of you now. So what I'm going to do is share a bird ID challenge with all of you and how it's going to work. I'm going to open up a poll on your screens, which you will all have in front of you. Please do not select your answers until I have put the options on the screen. But uh, just before I bring up that slideshow, you will see that there are six birds for you to identify this evening. Okay, so Birding Basics Bird 1. Our size is roughly 25 to 28 centimeters. Those of you who have fond memories of your 30 centimeter ruler back in school can use that to guide you. The shape of the bird is a passerine. So those of you who are new to birding, passerines are your perching birds. So this is a bird that would likely perch. Some notable plumage things, it has a crest. It's got brown, black and white feathers and a long tail. So that should be starting to give you a clue as to which of these birds we are dealing with. It's also got a long bill relative to its head and that bill is black. The legs are short and they are black. And the habitat that it frequents, as you can see by that distribution map, is quite widely spread. Anything from sparsely grassed savannas, gardens and wooded grasslands. So these birds are all over the place and even occurring in some broadleaf woodland too. In terms of their behavior, as Lance said, it's always good to watch the bird. You can find this bird foraging on the ground and often nesting in cavities. So the next step, I'm going to give you a picture of this bird. I see nobody has as yet selected their answer. So those of you in the Zoom room, if you know which bird I'm talking about before I pop the, the picture onto screen, you are welcome to pick an option there. In your question one bird IDs, you'll see that there is red-billed wood hoopoe, African hoopoe, Eurasian hoopoe, and African gray hornbill. So there is your bird. Let's see if anybody has a go at those questions. So if you are sitting at home, I'm sure many of you are shouting at your TV screens. That is indeed the African hoopoe. So congrats to those of you who chose correctly. And I'm gonna bring up the next slide. So bird number two, this is quite a large bird, double in size to the one that we were just talking about. So between 48 and 60 centimeters. The shape is near passerine, so not quite a perching bird, but similar looking. It has gray and black feathers. 
with red throat patches and a long tail that should be starting to give you some idea. It has a large yellow bill. So that should be a nice big clue for you. The legs are short and black. It lives in dry savanna habitats and thorn felt. And the behavior is ground foraging and cavity nesting, much like our other bird. And as you can see, it's very much a savanna species, restricted largely to the more northeastern parts of South Africa and that central northern Kalahari region. So this is what our bird looks like. Mr. Banana Beak, those of you who are Lion King fans. And I'm sure hopefully everybody's got this. I see a couple of people popping answers into the chat box. It is indeed the Southern Yellow-Billed Hornbill. Well done if you got that one right. And good to see some of you playing along on Facebook too. Keep it up. All right, our next bird, number three of six. The size is 23 to 26 centimeters. The shape is passerine. Plumage, black with a red eye and a notable fork in the tail. Now that should be a good clue for most of you who were on Flock to Marion, where our fancy dress competition happened to be won by someone who impersonated this bird with a very clever fork in the tail. It has a straight beak with a hooked end and this beak is shorter relative to the length of its head. It's got short black legs, lives in wooded, wooded savannas and often plantations, and its behavior is to perch prominently. And there it is on screen, and I'm sure it is no secret, I can see lots of you firing in your answers. It is indeed the forktail drongo, well done. Very common bird across much of South Africa, and certainly a lovely bird to encounter in the field with some great behaviors. Those of you who are getting into your bird behavior observations. All right, bird number four, it is 23 centimeters, so a little bit smaller than our hoopoe that we started with. It is a passerine, so it perches. Overall, it is a yellow bird with a gray head and olive wings. Now be careful here. It's got a decurved black sharp pointed beak. Its legs are medium in length and black. And it is found in shrublands, strandfelt, and grasslands. And that distribution map should be giving you some kind of clue as to how widely distributed this particular bird is. It sings from obvious perches and is often in duet. And this is what it looks like. So well done to those of you who picked the final option in your multiple choice. It is indeed the Bok Makiri. Well done. All right, bird number five. We've got two more to go. 24 to 26 centimeters. So roughly similar in size to our hoopoe bird, but very different in shape. This is a wading bird. So for our complete newbies, those are birds that we find close to water. And they often walk along the edges of pans and muddy flats in search of little insects and things to gobble up. Interesting note on the plumage here, the female is brighter than the male, which doesn't often happen with birds. And she's got a chestnut head and a white spot around her eye. The bill is long relative to the head. It's got a bit of an orange tip to the olive overall beak. The legs are quite long relative to the height of the bird and are pale yellow in color. It frequents the edges of seasonal marshes and wetlands and pans and is nomadic, foraging along the edges of these flooded grasslands and pans and is often quite skulky. So those of you who are having a look at your options, it is not the African jacana, but in fact, the greater painted snipe. And well done to those of you who managed to pick it. This is quite a tricky bird for our newbies, so don't panic. Waders are a whole new level of excitement. So well done to those of you who picked that one. And finally, on to our final one. I hope that everybody gets this one right. Quite widespread, as you can see in that distribution map. The size should automatically start giving this away. It is 125 to 150 centimeters and is a stalk-like bird of prey. 
If you have not chosen the answer yet, I am worried. I see a couple of you already coming through with that one. It's got gray plumage and black on the wings and legs, a notable crest of feathers and orange skin around its face, a prominent raptor bill that is gray, long legs that are pink and feathered to the knees. It loves open habitats like Strandfelt and Rhinosterfelt, our grasslands and open savannas. And its behavior is to stride actively looking for prey, delivering fatal kicks to those unlucky few who happen to cross paths with the ultimate predator. So well done, all of you shouting Secretary Bird at your TVs. You are 100% correct. And I thought we had to finish off on what is undoubtedly my favorite bird, as no one needs to uh, be reminded, but always a nice one to see. And as I mentioned, Lance, was watching two of these before we started tonight's show. So that is it in terms of our interactive stuff. Thank you so much, everyone who enjoyed the show with us this evening. You will see Lance's contact details on screen at the moment. The best way to get in touch with him is to pop him an email, lancerobinson.za at gmail.com. And his number is on the screen there. This is just a taster of the full on birding basics course that Lance offers. And those of you looking to up your birding game, I would highly recommend getting in touch with Lance. He is one of our BirdLife recommended course providers and he will certainly take your birding to the next level. So a massive thank you to Lance for putting in all of this effort despite not being able to join us this evening. And uh, don't forget that coming up very soon, Next week, Tuesday, we have another exciting bird ID course. And I'm just going to see if I can find our advert for you, if you'll all give me two seconds. While we are waiting for Melissa to sort out her techno gremlins, don't forget that uh, we will be back next Tuesday at seven o'clock. And this is going to be a really exciting talk by Johan Knobel and Neil Salia. And it's another ID course. So we are going to be looking at the incredible brown jobs. Now you think the birds that we've touched on today with Lance are tricky. Just imagine trying to ID some of those big brown jobs. So you will see on screen, we've got the big brown jobs identifying eagles in Africa. And it is certainly going to be a talk not to be missed. And just a reminder on the 15th of March, the bird life team will unfortunately be on staff meeting, so we will not be having a show in a month's time, but never fear, we will be back with a jam-packed schedule for you. And you can keep joining us for the next three weeks until then. So yeah, next week, big brown jobs. We're gonna up your birding skills even more. And this is one not to be missed if you like the raptors as I do. Johan and Neil are absolute experts when it comes to raptors and you are certainly going to have a hell of a lot of fun with all of them. Thank you all so much for tuning in this evening. A big thank you to my team for all the work in the background. It's always a massive effort to bring you these shows and we hope that you do enjoy them. I'll be back next week with our Raptor Talk. Don't miss it. Keep your eyes on the skies. Keep enjoying those birds. And I'll see you all next week, Tuesday at seven o'clock. Same time, same place as always. Good night, everybody, and enjoy the music. See you soon. <laughs>